coming over. Alrighty. Um, so for this project, I tried to create a dynamic photo album. It's one of the ideas that um, was available. And I wanted to do that because I have a bunch of pictures that I wanted somewhere to look at. Um, so the first thing I had to do was I'd import them. And the way uh, I did that was by using Flickr. Flickr has an API that makes it quite easy. Um, you just download it as a JSON and convert it over to a CVC, or I think that's what it was, a CVC? CSV. CSV. I'm a separated bag. Yeah. And well, we should be able to go directly with JSON. Yeah, so this is what the API looks like, and this is how you would set it up. You could add extras if you wanted anything specific. Nobody use API ever? Nobody, nobody API? Oh, I do. Pardon? Okay, so what does API stand for? Um, what to do? I don't know what he's talking about. I'll try to get away with this crap. Ask, what the hell are you talking about? An API is an automated programming interface, I think. It is, yeah. Okay, and so Twitter, or, or Flickr in this case, Twitter, Google, Facebook, Everything has an API. It's, it's what allows developers to run a query against a publicly accessible or privately accessible database and extract data that you then manipulate. Okay, we did a form of an API when we used our spreadsheet, Google Sheets. We did equal import URL and we scraped data off yep. of uh, uh, Wikipedia. Yep. That's like a baby step API built into Google Sheets, right? You're just scraping out. Not stealing, but stealing somebody else. You're just taking somebody else's data in a formatted and structured way that you then use. Yeah. And so, yeah, and that's like, for us, that's gold. So you can get mostly the, the interface is JSON. Um, I, JSON, in the Wiki JSON, you know, it's a complicated thing that I don't get. So I usually run it through CSV on a separated value, so it builds into a spreadsheet. And I've been using spreadsheets and spreadsheets exist, so I'm very comfortable. Yeah. Um, JSON, not so much for me. And JSON files are all different. With the multi-thread. Anyway, so yeah, so Flickr. So when you run that Flickr API, can you run it? Yep. So this is what it prints out. And zoom in for that, because I can't see my eyes look that. So that's what it gives me. Um, there's obviously a lot more. Uh, you click on the URL, um, and for some odd reason, it's so only... Did you see what just happened? That's really cool. So you can set any Flickr account, any ID, any person, whatever you want, run it with certain parameters, and the parameters are pretty well spelled out. Mm -hmm. Run it, click it, save it, you've got a file now, browser, you go file, save as, and you've got a file that you save. Um, that you can then read into Excel, manipulate, and then read into Wikipedia. Yeah. And so from this, you would go and run it through a, a CSV, um, another application you run it through to get it through a CSV, and then you download that. And then I just uploaded it to Google Sheets. Um, and this is what it ended up coming out. I had like 450 pictures or something like that. Yeah, 460. Um, I think at, at the time I already added a few more at the time, so then I just added more. Um, so this is the list. I then imported it into here, and this is the list of all the images. Uh, you can click on one, and this is what pops up. Um, so the image is an image template, uh, makes it easy. 
Um, had some troubles in the beginning. I know you and I had to work on it a little after class. That was, that was a real, that's a bit of a bear of a template. So what it's doing is using all of those like seven characters, seven numbers, make a clicker URL. Mm -hmm. So then you use the, you have to know the arm that it's on and the secret code and the user ID and the picture number and you need like, it's a really complicated URL. Yeah. And, but we're transcluding into the URL. And that's how we display the image. So the images stay on Flickr. Flickr tells you where they are. WordPress does this, right? We can, that's, this is this is how databases or, you know, programs work, so, yeah. Yeah, so this is what it is. I have the checkbox tags um, for my parent tags so that I can tag each photo. I don't think anybody knows what a parent tag is. So a parent. That's one of your pictures was tagged. Yeah. Um, so a parent tag is, as of right now, I only have three. Um, one of them's photo type, and it has three lower tags. I don't know what the specific name is for it. Parent tag. So what do you think? What do parents have? Children. So they're children. Parent tags and child tags. Very common vocabulary and database language, right? It, and it's a hierarchy. Parents have children. Um, these are all single parent tags. We don't do married parent tags. That, that would be a different kind of structure. That's called a ZZ structure, I think. That exists in database world. These are all single parent tags. Yeah. Um, and so each one I made had three, and you can just check them. Um, for this image, I have house, which uh, where I took the picture was a house I was staying at. Um, it's also an object because the main point of the picture was of the boat that was there. Um, so what happens when you check those? I know. Not so I check landscape, it pops up there. Um, you can also click on the landscape and it'll bring um, the images that are already um, tagged with landscape. So links to the images that are tagged with landscape and mild code is landscape on template now? Um, I don't have a landscape template. So what, how do you generate the code for landscape? Um, I just did the uh, list links. This one. Okay, so that should be the template. And landscape should be, it's already tagged to photo type. Mm -hmm. And photo type should be tagged to parent tag. So then you basically would have a template say, if I am a child tag, then do list links. <laughs> okay, or even better, show my pictures. And now you, then once you've got that, then you can show any random, not any random, any set of pictures based on combination of having a child tag. So yeah. Running that into the template would be the next step. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, then, so let's um, look at this structure that we've got for parent tags and child tags. Um, and think about the difference between tags and fields. So what would be an alternative way that um, Andrew might have done this with fields instead of tags? Because we cannot, we can make a widget of checkbox fields. In fact, it's already built in. Checkbox can either add a tag or it can assign a value to a field. Either way. But how could Eric, Andrew have done this with fields? Exactly. So the field would be called photo type. Okay. And clicking on object would assign object as the value. Gotcha. What would be the downside of that? To be so there wouldn't be to... as much interaction because you couldn't have the tags or like you different. could it could look exactly the same. It would look precisely the same. There would be no difference. What happens when you click landscape? What? Uh, no, no, no. When you tag it, when you click the checkbox for landscape. Okay. So we have to create a multi 
value field mm -hmm. in order to accept more than one cat, more than one object or value, right? So we can do that. We can have multi value fields or hubless fields. Um, so you have four, you could say no, because those can only be one. You can only be an object four. So the question of this is an and or four. So um, yeah. the value of using fields instead of tags, I think there's computation value. I think that's what James is coming up with. Um, I think fields are more efficient than tags, computationally. Um, and there's display characteristics. Fields are also harder to work with than tags because of all this these tools built in to handle tags that you have to manually go through. So, yeah, they're just different ways of going back. Um, Children to prototype. Yes. Yes. And then, and there was another thing that we had, like, and you can easily add additional children. How do you add a child to prototype? Um. So how you do that is you just uh, create a new tiddler and have it link. You do a new here from the parent tag, and that creates a new child. As soon as you do that, it's accessible on all the checkbox tags. So, but that's not what you got to what you're asking. You want to, um, to shield all the children to be able to search. So the navigation is just a first, previous, next, and last. Based on what? What do you mean based on what? Like what's next? Um, next would just be, so each of the images have a number, 9481. Uh -huh. So the next one should be 9482, unless I didn't have that one, because I did delete a few photos at the time I took them, because they just didn't look good. So if I click next, it should be 9482. Which is just nice. So, what does Andrew need to do? So, we want to see first, previous, next, last for each child. Because otherwise, what's the point of the tag? So that we can navigate. So, if you want to have multi dimensional navigation, mm -hmm. you have a field that has a listed number. Well, 
He does, because that first previous next last is based on something, right? First of this, last of this, based on a list. Yeah. So you just have to have a bunch of those first previous next last. So you have like, because I have three, I would have three. Well, if you wanted to search on parent type, if you have one, two, three, four, as many child tags as you have, you would have those as navigational buttons. Okay. That would be crazy, but it's a way. That'd be a lot of first, previous, next, and last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd kind of be a little hectic. I, I feel like at that point you just want to. So what's the solution to Andrew's absolutely accurate point that it's a lot of first, previous, next, last? You only want one first, previous, next, last. Couldn't you? have them go by parent tag and then underneath the parent tag had your own templates which then had th whatever child tags they had underneath those you just did the next previous person last under those that way it doesn't look too crazy every time you go to the, like a new tiddler if we want to build a phone based app where you don't have movement yeah you mostly stay within a tiddler so you're going to so you're not going to move your, you could have a pull down to the left or in the middle of your first, previous, next, last button that selects from a set of child fields, right? So every child field is, every child tag is tag child tag. Oh, okay, yeah. And you pick the child tag and that sets the first, previous, next, last. So you're looking at this picture and I, and I know it's a landscape photo waterfall. Why don't mm -hmm. you see the next waterfall? And you already have that. Click on waterfall. Tag water, no, no, sorry. Tag water. Oh, oh sorry. Click, no, up the, there, click on that. Those, that is sort of like, that's a list of them all, but it's not first, previous, next, last. Yeah. So you kind of already have these, all those lists, but they're just not, they're all of them. It doesn't place 9648 in the scheme of first, previous, next, last. So you want to take that functionality and make it a FPNL. Okay. So that would be cool because then you're then you have multi-dimensional navigation. Yeah. And that's what we're at. So yeah, first, previous, next, last is is it's not random. It's based on type, which is the least interesting part up here, right? So yeah, that, that's that, yeah. So to get the multi-dimensional photo photo navigator, you have to build multi-dimensional navigation. You've got all the tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, Jillian, a couple of them last night had the select pull down based on the list using the select thing, you got the value, and then you use that to populate your FPNL. Hmm. Right? You're not following it. Me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were trying to hurry. Yeah, I understand. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. You just think Jillian. No. I, yeah. Uh, you, you said her name, so yeah, I was I like. The, the I was gotcha. She's got the select pull down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Um, How do I stop share? Oh, we got plenty of time.